Hello again. In this video I am going to demonstrate how to create a Codasys project in EasyBuilder Pro using a CMT3090 and our IR series remote I.O. So let's get started. I find it a lot easier to start out with a project folder to keep the Codasys files as well as anything related to the HMI project all together because there are files that you need to re cross reference between the two projects. So I'm going to go ahead and start with making a folder and we'll call it Codasys Video Demo. I want to go ahead and start out by opening an instance of Codasys. And, and we want to uh, create a new project and we want to start out with a standard project and we'll find our folder here and we'll call it good enough Now, if you have everything installed properly from our package, you will have um, the built-in codices from WinTech. And I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll start out uh, Ladder Logic. Now, I already have my IR series equipment installed and configured with compatible IP addresses with uh, the network I've got set up and so on and so forth. So I'm going to skip all of that and assume that you've already got that done. So if you get to this point uh, you want to go ahead and, and double click your device and it will bring up this dialog here and um, I had this other gateway set up for something else but we'll go with our standard gateway and um, go ahead and uh, click scan network and of course it found our CMT device now uh, if it did not if if it did not find your device it's probably because you don't have your network configured correctly if you need to adjust your network settings to match what's default on the HMI or whatever may be on the HMI uh, the way you can find that is you go here on the 3090 and hit the magic button and um, click on codices and right here you can see the uh, the IP address and uh, sub mask uh, make sure those both match your network and of course that can be found here and uh, so go ahead and set yours up to make sure uh, that all that matches and then um, click uh, scan network and it should find it you go ahead and click on it make sure it's highlighted and click OK and you'll see all this will go green uh, now you know you're in communication with your device so now we need to set up the uh, communication with the I.O. so we want to right click and do uh, add device and we want to add an ethernet adapter alright now this next step is kind of important you want to make sure that you then click on the ethernet adapter and bring it into focus 
and then you want to add a Modbus master and then you want to click on Modbus master and bring it into focus and add the slave Now, right here is where you actually can embed the CODIS's side IP address, the one I showed you on the screen right there. Um, you can either use the one here that we're talking to. This is the one that we've already got that's already set up and that we communicated through our connection here. Or you can adjust it to a, uh, to a new one. Now, if you can you can pull it in like that, but if you want to embed that IP address in your project, then um, then you can use this radio button here. So now every time you upload it, it'll it'll use this IP address here. Modbus Master. Um, all this is good. Should be okay by default. Go to the Modbus slave. Um, this is where you set up the IP address of your device. Now, if you've already got it all connected, you can use the easy remote I.O. tool here and scan your network. And, uh, and it shows us our IP address on it. Um, so that's what I want to enter in here. And this is unit one, port 502, all that stays the same. Now we need to go ahead and set up our slave channels. So we need to go ahead and uh, click Add Channel. We want to um, read coils, function code 1. Uh, we're going to do an offset of 0 because this is our first uh, device. And we've got 8 inputs. We need to add another channel, which is going to be uh, write multiple coils, function code 15, offset of 0, and a length of 8. Now at this time I like to go ahead and define our input and output names, our symbol names if you will, uh, our outputs I'm just going to call out 0 through 7, and then our inputs we'll just do uh, So now those are actually uh, will be available in our project. Um, so I want to go ahead and uh, open up a project, and I'll show you right here. I can put a coil over here, and uh, and go ahead and use. And you can see that's a, a valid, valid object in our project already, so that's good to use. Um, so we can go ahead and uh, write a little bit of code here. I'll do a uh, just make this uh, 
Let's make that start. And uh, we'll make it a, a type bull. And I don't want to make it retentive or anything. And uh, we'll go ahead and just do a Same thing. And uh, add a coil here, and we'll do this for uh, call it running. And we'll put this here. Go ahead and uh, insert a network here, and we'll do a. Uh, let's see what might be interesting. And we'll do maybe a counter here. We'll call it run count. Do a reset and then uh, we'll do a That a word value. Ah, let me change that to counter. And uh, let's see, we'll make the uh, this, we'll just call this set point. And I want that retentive. So it stays, and then uh, let's just do this to uh, out seven. All right. So now we've got uh, we've got some um, objects here in our in our. Uh, project to find so we can bring those on into our uh, HMI project so let's see how to do that so what we need to do is go to application and, and we need to add an object and we want to add a symbol configuration and that's good enough right there go ahead and hit build and uh, now you can see all our stuff here uh, we want to go ahead and um select these three items and we'll go to our build tab here and we want to click generate code now if um if you remember the uh file we made now you'll see there's an xml file in here and we're going to use that, we're going to bring that into our project for our codices tags and our uh, Easy Builder Pro project. And we want to go ahead and open an instance of Easy Builder Pro. And we're going to do new. I'm using a CMT3090. Uh, our device. We want uh, WinTech Labs and built-in codices. Click on our Tag Manager. Import Tags. 
find our file and uh, there's our XML document click open sometimes it takes a few seconds and uh, there we go there's all our tags so we can just exit out of there click OK so now when we go to create an object we've got our uh, driver installed and bring this up and here's our tags here's our uh, counter objects we generated uh, within our program are running start and stop uh, here's our counter right here and then we can actually access these things directly uh, within that counter uh, we've got our uh, reset bit so there's all our stuff uh, in the interest of time I've gone ahead and uh, and I made another neat little project and uh, we'll go ahead and, and run it so I can demonstrate it so uh, here in this project I just made buttons for all of our elements that we defined in there and I've got a uh, I did a screenshot of our PLC code so it would uh, run alongside it there and all so um, anyway we'll go ahead and uh, log on and of course everything connected and it's correct and good to go and uh, you can see that we're here running so I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up CMT viewer and uh, here you can see our project let me try to move this over so you can see it all work at the same time so I've got a uh, a counter here and every time um, running comes on we count I've got a set point of six right here and you can see I've mirrored all that I made little objects to show all that here so uh, we go ahead and hit our start button and of course we start and we count it up by a value one hit stop start stop isn't that cool see how fast that works uh, there our uh, timer timed out and uh, and our output came on here you can see the IO in real time coming off and on let's get our counter up till it goes clicks off see now output 7 also is on pretty cool stuff that's about it thanks for watching and be sure to come back and see more of our instructional videos